talk a minute about my family history. Um, my uh, my family uh, started Jamestown. George Yardley was governor, and his wife Temperance Flower doing. She's a tough bird boy. They um they had to cannibalize dead people to live in the starving winter. Um, and so she, she, her husband, George, died, and she married Argyll, another governor. But um, during the Civil War, um, well, we had, a, we had a land grant, and our family got a bunch of land in Buckingham. And um, they divided it like a dowry for the, my, my, our farm, my family's farm was called Afton, and they, um, they had 500 acres. But during the Civil War, um, you know, money was tight. They had Confederate money. Um, but so one of my uncles, great-great-great uncles, got in a field to, after the Civil War, and all the slaves were gone, and he got gored by a bull, and it broke his hip. So he, they didn't have hip replacement, so that was it for him. He was in a wheelchair, and they lowered him, and st he was upstairs in the house, and he shot himself just too difficult to live that way, I think. Um, but then one of the brothers went down to Birmingham after the war and started a stove business. And I guess, I don't know how they met, but uh, his wife was Jenny Porter and her father was a, um, a judge and he ran for Congress, but he lost. And um, he actually had three kids and two boys, they just disappeared um, after the war. And I, I was told that probably they got into drugs. You don't think of drugs in the Civil War, but they they were there. So she got married and did well and had some kids, children. I think three. Um, one of her daughters killed herself. I think she had mental illness, depression. Um, it was very tough because they didn't have medicines. There was nothing they could do about melan. It's melancholy. And um, up at the farm. We did have slaves, and they called them darkies, the darkies, and they stayed for many, many years working, even after the Civil War, the ho the people that did, were the house help, so to speak. It, I guess the living was okay. Um, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to, to try to go out in the world and uh, get a job when you're black or a darkie, and um, so to me knowing what I know about segregation and a lot of black people just couldn't get the education, had no reflection on their intelligence, just it was against the law to own a house. They, you know, and, and so nowadays we have a generation of people that are grandparents that had to drop out of school to go to work to, to, to feed and pay, pay things for their family and they didn't get paid much. Um, and I think that's a lot of the problem in poor neighborhoods um, stemming from segregation. So I think that we as a society, um, maybe even government, um, owe these families that have been so affected by segregation and slavery, and we need to offer them opportunities and training that they can do um, to get viable jobs that they they like and they enjoy. So and they're not always... One guy was like a road crew. He's like, I, don't, I wanted to go to art school. But he, he it was too tough, too tough. And so, um, and, and when I've been to um, the EBT office, they, they give the EBTs, but there's not a training. Like, knock on the door. I want to train for a job. Help me. And it's just difficult. They, they don't do that. They'd rather give you EBT and welfare um, and terrible housing rather than spend the money um, to train the people to do jobs that they want to do or they can do. They can test them and find out what they're good at. And our modern schools are industrialized. So it doesn't meet the needs of people that don't do as well on the SOL test. And there's a lot of really smart people that don't do SOL well. Um, so I think that also hurts a child's self-esteem. And then, of course, the swim teams. They all need to know how to swim. And when I... When I witness this, and it's crazy, 
The whole thing is just crazy. I'm like, well, just train them to do a job they want to do. They'd be off welfare. They wouldn't be going to prison. Um, children would have happier lives. And in the long run, we'd all profit from this because they would be making a good income and they would be happier and their kids would be happier. And when you, you do that then, and they get educated, um, the whole society would be better. You know, the uh, teachers, you know, teachers only make, it's hard for a teacher to pay a mortgage, a car payment, school loans. They have to pay off their school loans on that salary. Oh my God, they they can't do it. So we we're losing gifted teachers because they just can't function on that kind of money. And my suggestion is a state car to to um, alleviate some of that problem. And then when you buy a fleet of state cars, it's not that expensive, and you can resell them when they're sixty thousand miles. And then there's no maintenance. It's a brand new car. So um, I don't think teachers are are being treated that well. And um, they are very important people in the community, very important.